I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. That's right. And who's my best buddy in the whole wide world? Ruby Doo. Let's get jinky with it. Scooby Doo. Oh my God. No one is stupid enough to believe that. Who's the ugly old broad? Oh. Right you. Right you. Right you. I'm sitting here going the. For all rights and purposes, this should be a rant in the fact of you could easily say the same problems with this or the same problems you have. And people go, well, Matt, you hate the Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtle movies, but yet you liked this film, although it does have its flaws, believe me. And I, I can't, I watch it again, I can't hate this film. I don't like the second one, which I didn't, it was going to weird people out. Like, wait a minute, what? I know, I know. I grew up with the Scooby-Doo cartoon. I grew up watching the show. Sadly, I don't think I have them anymore. I'd like to get them again. But I remember as a kid watching a lot of the episodes of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Watching Scooby-Doo and the Boo Brothers, Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf, and highly enjoying them. I remember when this came out, and I was really excited for it. I mean, I watched Scooby-Doo so much. I remember for a little marathon, they had a Scooby-Doo interstitials that were like the Blair Witch Project. And you can find them on YouTube. But it was like a marathon. And then every once in a while, between commercials, they'd have like a little Scooby-Doo interstitial thing that was reminiscent of the Blair Witch Project. That's how much I followed Scooby-Doo. And... I had heard that the movie was coming out. I was really excited and saw it in the theater and really enjoyed it. And while I watch it again, there's little scenes I don't care for. The fucking fart scene that could easily be cut out. Easily be cut out from the movie. It's very risque. I guess at one point they wanted this to be R-rated. and more Because it's written by James Gunn. And... Or they want to do a wrist, wrist, wrist. It's hard to even say with Scooby Doo. Parties, why even do that? But then, in a weird way, the sequel was more like the cartoon, and yet I disliked that one, but yet I liked this one. And then people go, idea, why would you like this when you hate the Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtle films? And these are both franchises I grew up with Scooby Doo and Ninja Turtles. Maybe because I look at them in different ways. I mean, you can love many things. Doesn't mean you love them in the same way. Uh, maybe because at least some of the characters really do seem like the cartoon. Scooby-Doo, despite the fact the CGI is not good. It's not. It wasn't that good for 2002. It's definitely not good now. But I don't think his design per se is as bad as say Garfield I'm not saying the CGI I'm saying the design is not as awful although part of me goes you could have just made it an actual cartoon a la Who Framed Roger Rabbit mixed in with live action I don't think people would have had that much of a problem and maybe that would have helped but Scooby-Doo himself as a character wasn't really that 
tremendously out of character for me. I could still see that was a character I would have seen on the show. And one of the reasons I really enjoy the film is Matthew Lillard. I'm a fan of Matthew Lillard. I liked him in Scream, 13 Ghosts, which I know that's the end of Blu-ray. I'm curious about that. I'm a big Matthew Lillard fan. And he was perfect as Shaggy. And honestly, Shaggy was my favorite character on the cartoon. I enjoyed Scooby-Doo, but I loved Shaggy voiced by T.C. Taysom on that show. And I thought Matthew Lillard did that job perfectly. I thought the sequel, he's still in it, but this one, you could almost say Shaggy is the star of the film because he's able to save the day by the end. And he has some nice little sweet moments with Scooby where he showcases their friendship. And being a... You just say, maybe you chalked this up to nostalgia as well. Hey, that's a fair point. But when it got to the scene near the end where it's like, well, who's my buddy, Scooby-Doo, they're talking. As a guy who followed a cartoon tremendously, moments like that worked for me. And then again, Shaddy being the hero, which he, by himself in a way. I mean, everybody helped, but... Uh, that and Matthew Lewis' performance, among other stuff, made me go, I can't really hate this flick. And in a weird way, the, the craziness of its plot, its surprise villain, which I honestly loved. I loved that twist. I remember in the theater going, oh shit. I just got a kick out of it. Spoiler alert. You find out that the main villain is scrappy do i went that annoying little fucker is the main villain my hat's off i mean i know a lot of people got pissed off about that i didn't because i love scooby doing the boo brothers i love scooby doing the reluctant werewolf trust me it wasn't because of scrappy do in them I like the story, Scooby, Shaddy, the other weird characters they met. Scrappy-Doo, though, I always thought was an annoying little fucker. I never liked Scrappy-Doo. And then the fact that me and the villain and he got his ass hit, I'm like, yes. Uh, so, that was ballsy. Yes, if everything's subjective and everybody has different opinions and different perceptions and diff look at it from different angles... If this was a character I liked and it made for a villain, I can understand being mad and angry. Trust me, I can understand that. But I can't, I'm not in that ballpark, so I can't say that. So the fact that they made Scrappy do a fucking villain, I thought was rather fucking ingenious. And the soundtrack is weird, but kind of catchy, interesting. Because it has this almost, I don't want to say red gay, but... And a land of drum, million drums going on, on. And what was, what was it? Da na 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 Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? I, I forgot the the artist, the, the rappers. They, it was like a weird choice, but in a way, it was kind of interesting. I do admit, though, I wish they had kept. There was a deleted scene on the DVD where, and you can find it on YouTube, it was an animated opening. I don't know why they cut that out. You could have cut the stupid fart scene and left that opening in. I think that would have been miles better. And, I mean, the director is not the director I would have picked, Roger Gosnell. Gosnell, I mean, he's not a great director, to be perfectly honest. I do think most of the cast and some of the writing does propel the film over its meh director. And again, Matthew Lillard, he was perfect as Shaddy. It felt like in this one, he had a lot more to do compared to the second film. So maybe that's another reason why the second film. And then the second film, it didn't seem it had as much craziness as this one. Which I know that's one of the reasons why a lot of people hate this movie. And I can understand that, trust me. How people feel about this is how I feel about Michael Bay's Ninja Turtle films. But, I don't know, for some reason, some of it worked for me. 
Maybe because Scooby Doo I looked as a fun, goofy cartoon, and Ninja Turtles I take more seriously because of the original comic books and even the 2003 cartoon. Maybe that's splitting hairs, but it got no hair to split, so let's beat you to it. It's a very ton in cheek movie. There are moments that did make me chuckle, watch it again. For example, hey, you have a call from Mr. Do? And some guy goes, a uh, Melvin Do? No, Scooby Do. And that has a callback at the end where they want Scooby Do. And then Scooby Do goes, uh, don't you mean Melvin Do? <laughs> I don't know, the way that I played off, it, it did make me laugh. And then the fact that the brainwashing facility is turning people into brosties. So pretty much turning people into Colin Farrell in the remake of Fright Night. <laughs> Johnny Brosties, bro. So if you want to be Colin Farrell in the Fright Night remake, yeah, that's the brainwashing facility. It seemed like a guy who I do think probably was a fan of the show, but wanted to, and maybe it's weirdness, kind of makes it why I can watch some of it as a grown man who has seen so many cartoons, and then maybe because of how kind of risque, in a way, really ballsy it was at times. I mean, almost 10 minutes in, I haven't even talked about the plot. The plot is they're all in a case, like usual. This time it's the lunar ghost. Matthew Lillard is perfect. Look, 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 there's a ghost behind me. Ghost right behind me, isn't there? They both get caught in this barrel, and like a lot of the cartoons, Scooby and, and Shaggy, they mess up, but they ultimately do catch the ghost, even if it's by accident or fate or by chance. Call it fate, call it luck, call it karma. Pamela Anderson comes in, which I, I, that's more of a take on the Scooby-Doo movies where you had Don Knotts, you had Batman and Robin, in this case is Pamela Anderson. And we try to poke fun at the show, which is an instance I can understand. Things go a little bit if, a little bit haywire and the group disbands. Fred, Daphne, and Velma, they kind of want to split up. And then Scooby and Shaggy, they're just kind of left behind. And he has jokes, like poking fun at our Scooby, or especially Shaggy. Is Shaggy a stoner? So you have the song that goes past the ditchy on the left-hand side. Smoke coming out of their van, they're laughing, but they're eating eggplant burgers. Later on, he meets a lady named Mary Jane. He's like, that's my favorite name. Part of me wonders if, although I like the film, you could fix this with editing. If you fix some of those risky things that, again, part of me is like, oh, that's interesting, but literally if you just put a different song in that scene, if you cut out the Mary Jane line, if you cut out the fart scene and a couple others, maybe this film wouldn't be as hated as it would be maybe but one thing leads to another the group gets together again they go to this island spooky island and again it's a very ton in cheek quality i will say when they get on the island there's some really good set design because of the certain rise and the way these rise a lot of practical production value with how colorful these rides look and this point where the characters there's these big pendulum swinging and physical rides going all around I thought the set design was fairly solid uh, there's these purple monsters very shitty CGI to be perfectly honest that's one thing I would give the second film as I thought, A, the CGI was a bit improved, and second off, there were some practical effects mixed in with the ghostly villains, plus they were villains from the cartoon. The the Black Knight, the, the minor 49er. So while I'm not a big fan of the second film, that is one 
positive note I give that film. But I kind of liked, I liked Velma. I liked the actress who played Velma. I thought she did a good job. Plus, she was very hot looking. But that's my opinion. Sarah Michelle Gellar is Daphne. I honestly think she's the weakest of the cast. Most, pe most people would say Freddie Prince Jr. But I thought Freddie Prince Jr. I never hated the guy. He's not fantastic of an actor. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know. When I watch even a shitty movie like I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. I go, honestly, Freddie Prince Jr. is probably the best part of that movie. And I've seen him in other stuff, and I could deal with him. And I thought as Fred, you know, the fact that they make him out to be a guy who seems a bit conceited, a bit arrogant, I was fine with it because it was part of an arc to overcome. Because it's not like Fred was, to be honest, he wasn't much of a character on the cartoon. Hey, Dane, let's split, split up and search for clues. That was pretty much it. So, I honestly think Freddie Prinze Jr. did fine for what he was supposed to do. The part is a rather bland, boring part of Fred and Scooby-Doo. I'm sorry, this comes from a guy who's a big fan of the cartoon, but it's not like Fred was, really, what could you say, personality or character-wise? So, and then the fact they gave him an arc where you become as slim as it is, I appreciate it. Summer Show Dealer, her character, where she just seemed whiny. She seemed, I'm tired of being the damsel in distress. And then, I get that you don't want to be kidnapped, but I don't remember Daphne being kidnapped tremendous a lot of times on the show. I really don't remember that being the case. So, her being tired of being the damsel in distress. That wasn't really the cartoon. That didn't really happen a lot. So I, that was one bit of the, the riot I didn't understand from James Gunn. Maybe it's one of those things where, hey, Sarah Michelle Gellar was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Okay, would I have her fight? Why does she fight his, hey, being a female, she's the hot lady. Although I thought Velma, she's a beautiful lady. I like Sarah Michelle Gellar as an actress, but I think Velma in this was hotter, to be honest. I wanted to get the actress's name. I thought she did a good job, but oh, just the way, maybe it's the way the character was written. Maybe both in this, I just thought she was the weakest. I think there's other people you could have gotten for it. But yeah, maybe, maybe it's the writing, you know, as much as I think James John didn't do as bad as people make it out to be. Her writing was not that good either, to be perfectly honest. I know this has a low rate in IMDb. I, I can understand it. This is not really a film I would defend, but at the same time, I'm not going to lie and say I hate it just because I liked it. Linda Cardellini as Velma, I thought, did a good job. You also have appearances by Rowan Atkinson, Miguel A. Nunez Jr., who I remember from Connoisseur 2 and Friday 13 Part 5 and Return of Living Dead, and most people remember him from Juana Man. Miguel A. Nunez Jr. is in this. In Rowan Atkinson, he's mainly known as Mr. Bean. You have appearances by people like Sugar Ray, which that hasn't really aged because no one knows who the fuck Sugar Ray is. Well, you guys do, but a lot of people don't. Like, who the fuck? I'm looking up some trivia before I go on. Apparently... The film was originally set to have a much darker tone, essentially poked you fun at the series, much like the Brady Bunch movie. Several rumors about these aspects in the original cartoon were passed around by fans of the original, and were to be incorporated into live-action film. According to Sarah Michelle Gellar, after the cast has signed on, there was a change, and the film became more family-friendly, though some of the original adult jokes are still in the movie. Huh. 
apparently people like Jim Carrey and Mike Myers express interest in playing Shaggy. Interesting, but again, I thought Matthew Lillard. Obviously, I'm not alone because Matthew Lillard was the voice of Shaggy in quite a few of the animated Scooby-Doo cartoon movies. I forget which ones. I'm sure there's a list, but I did not. thought that was pretty good. Really good choice. Yeah, I liked that it really became a Scooby and Shaddy. They're the stars of the film. That's one difference between the Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtle movies. They're not the stars of those films. And the design of those turtles are shit. Stab, stabby. That's what those fucking turtles are. They're stabby. They're the stabs on your ass. But Shaddy looked and sounded and acted like Shaddy. Scooby Doo, despite 2002 CGI, I thought he design wise looked and acted like Scooby. Velma I thought looked and acted like Velma and they were the stars of the film and I think there was some clever stuff like Becky Scrappy Doo the villain no you don't need some of the jokes you don't need Scrappy Doo pissing on Daphne in a flashback you don't need the fucking fart scene where Scooby and Shaddy are burping and farting just cut that fucking scene out Worst goddamn scene ever. Well, one of the worst scene in the movie, at least. The purple type monsters, you could have just had practical effects, practical suit work. But at the same time, there, I, I was still having fun with a lot of it. I was still having fun with. Even the physical dad Scooby would do that remind me of the show, like him tiptoeing around behind a bed and trying to do stuff, which would happen a lot on the show to get the monster to like him, like in this case, doing the monster's nails or something. Like he would do that silly stuff in the cartoon or little stuff. It's the little stuff like Velma saying, I always do you were a hero, Shaggy. Or... Scooby being told that he's going to be a sacrifice. He's like, a sacrifice? And he's smiling because he doesn't get it. <laughs> there are moments that made me chuckle. Me? Don't you mean Melvin do? So, I don't mind the soundtrack. I thought a good chunk of the t cast, other than Ms. Sarah Michelle Geller, did their jobs fairly well. Matthew Lillard was fantastic in it. Uh, the effects don't hold up. They probably didn't hold them 2002, let alone 2020. There's scenes that were cut out and there's problems in there, but I thought it had enough of a heart, enough of sort of a ballsy, risque factor, like making Scrappy do a villain, which there are people who liked him and people who were pissed off about that. But I'm not one of them. I'm quite the opposite. People like Velma, Linda Cardellini, they did a solid job. Uh, the set design, the, the way the film looked, and it just made it trying to be unique. Maybe this is how people feel about the Transformers movies. Maybe this is what people feel about the Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtle films. And maybe, maybe that's how they view them. Is how I view this. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. And then I'll get to the second one because. I recorded that right after I watched it because I would forget that one so you don't see a different background in that video but in a weird way it I keep mentioning the Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtle films because the both two movies that were going to have a third film and the third film got cancelled because the second film underperformed even though the second film was supposedly more to fans liking than the previous one and the first of those franchises were a little bit darker or risk, risque or I mean that film had boner jokes and this has fart jokes you know they both have fart jokes it, and yet I don't know it's this weird but in the second Scooby-Doo film I don't like because I didn't like the story they told I didn't like the I didn't really feel anything that unique or memorable. Like here, I remember the, the stuff I was talking about, some of the, the jokes and the, the heart between Scooby and Shaggy. I, I liked that bit. And 
Matthew Lillard seemed he had more to do in this one. He seemed like almost a central focus, which I thought was the right decision at the end of the day. But Scooby-Doo is also a central focus as well, because he's the title of the movie. Again, the, the villain choice I thought was inspired, inspired in this. So yeah, I know I should hate the film, but I don't. I can't hate the film, and so I won't. I do like the film, despite its flaws. I had fun with it. It was fun to watch it again. And there's not much more I can say other than that. But either way, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.